What's up? It's Luke, and you're watching Luke the Gathering. And we're back in Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. We're gonna pick a pack apart. We're gonna open it up and see which cards would we pick in a draft if this was the pack we opened. A fun way to just kind of practice and see what we would pick in drafts. I love doing drafts. I love seeing what we can get in the packs and trying to figure out the best cards. So let's take a look at this pack and then we'll pick it apart. We got Bull Strength, Shocking Grasp, Boots of Speed, Planner Ally, Eyes of the Beholder, Inspiring Bard, You Come to the Knoll Camp, Spiked Pit Trap, Leather Armor, Dire Wolf Prowler, Displacer Beast, Dungeon Crawler, Dungeon Map, and ooh, a Mythic Rare, Inferno of the Star Mounts. Hmm, I wonder what we're going to pick first in this pack. Um, and then I forgot to ditch the island and the token. Ditch those. And uh, we'll see what we pick first. Okay, let's lay these cards out, and boy, I think this is going to be an easy choice for pick number one. That's for sure. We've got some really nice cards here, and the best card in this pack makes it super easy. It's going to be the Inferno of the Star Mounts, the rare, right off the bat. I'm just gonna move these cards a little bit out of the way. The Inferno of the Star Mounts is something you take. I mean, that is really just an awesome card. It's four red red. The spell cannot be countered. It has flying and haste. That's just crazy. Um, so the turn it hits the board, you can just attack with it and it's in the air which is really hard to deal with often it also has for red in front of the star mouse plus one plus O oh until end of turn when the when his power becomes 20 in this way it deals 20 damage to any target which won't happen probably but like it's red so you know even though it costs six there are so many red cards that make treasure I would just, this would be, I, I, this is, I'm taking this first every day, I don't even know, there might be only a few other cards where you would have to like really debate it if it was, um, like if you had somehow two rares in the pack, you'd be like, um, this or the other rare, that other card better be really amazing, but Inferno of the Star Mounts is probably one of the best cards in the entire set, so you're taking Inferno of the Star Mounts every single time in this pack, I think. Uh, there's like no question about it um, All right, so let's see what else we have here What would be next in terms of the pick I think um, We've seen a couple of these cards before um, I see bold's strength here, which I've taken and Thought of a little bit highly of this combat trick. It's a nice one um, but we also have planner ally which is a five drop, but this fly drop, a uh, fly drop, this five drop, it's flying, and then whenever it attacks, it doesn't have to hit the opponent, you get a venture into the dungeon, which I think is pretty strong. A uh, 3 3 flyer that gets to go into the dungeon. So I think Planner Ally is going to be my number two pick out of this pack, and I always sort of like having creatures over other types in in limited especially I do like removal spells quite a bit but I'm going with planner ally here and continuing with that theme I think I'm gonna pick inspiring bard as the next pick out of this pack it says when inspiring bard enters the battlefield choose one bardic inspiration target creature gets plus two plus two until end of turn or Song of Rest, you gain three life. So the cool thing about green, and I I might even take Inspiring Bard over Planner Ally, 
I like that it's cost just a little bit less. It's still a 3-3, three, three, doesn't fly, but you know, if you're in a life gain deck, which green is one of the, you know, life gain colors, and there are all sorts of effects and bonuses that happen for gaining life, I think Inspiring Bard is great. Getting three life back is is really nice, especially in a slower deck, if you're trying to sort of stall the opponent a little bit, you're gonna be losing life, and getting three back is great. Also, if you remember in the other pack, we had Lurking Roper. That thing only unta uh, untaps if you are able to gain life, and this is something that would help with that particular card. So if you have these two card packs in a row, I mean, you'd probably have to take in front of the star mounts, but of course, the star mounts would be probably gone by, you know, this time. If you already, if this was another pack, a second pack, or a third pack, if you had Lurking Roper, you know, you'd take Inspiring Bard probably over Planner Ally. Although, you know, I think Planner Ally might be just a bit stronger. I mean, I don't know. Inspiring Bard is a little bit cheaper. I'll just keep them the way it is. I do like Planner Ally's flying ability in this case. So we'll, we'll, we'll stick with this, but I really could see these two cards going either way. Okay, next up in this pack, hmm, well, I don't see a lot, but I'm going to pick You Come to a Knoll Camp. It's sort of a combat trick. I do like it. I do like this combat trick. Um, it only costs one and a red, and you can intimidate them, and that means up to two target creatures can't block this turn, which can make a huge difference. I, I'm, I'm in the camp that I enjoy combat tricks quite often. Um, I particularly like being aggressive, and so doing this can possibly, when you the game, get, get cards in to attack your opponent when they don't expect it. The other thing it does is target creature gets plus three plus one until end of turn, and that can be used on defense. It says they fend them off, right? So that is a defensive thing. They think they're gonna trade with you, you can use this, you keep your guy on the board. I think that's great. I think that card and bull strength are similar in that um, they're both very aggressive cards. Bull strength mostly doesn't have that second portion where, you know, you can, it's, so bull strength, it has the ability to gain trample. So if you're on defense, trample's not going to do a whole lot. <clears throat> so I feel like you come to a null camp can be used on offense and defense. Bull strength is a really great offensive card, giving plus two, plus two and trample, and you get to untap it. So definitely this is a card you really use only on offense you know, unless you were in like a huge pickle and you had to keep a creature alive for whatever reason. So, um, I'm gonna put you come to an old camp and then Bull's Strength. Bull's Strength I put a little bit lower in some of the, in the other pack, but in this pack I think it's, it goes right here, it slots in here. My next pick will be a really nice little one drop Dungeon Crawler. I'm just not a huge fan of Dungeon Crawler because I don't like creatures that come into play tapped. Even though it only costs one and it's a 2-1, it comes into play tapped. I'm not a huge fan of that. And it says whenever you complete a dungeon, you may return Dungeon Crawler from your graveyard to your hand. So that's a really nice little um, ability if you've completed the dungeon. So he can recur, but you know, you don't go through dungeons that often. I really often feel like there are some decks that can really make it through dungeons, and then other way, other otherwise, it's kind of actually hard to make it through an entire dungeon, even the short ones. So the fact that it costs only one but comes in tapped, I'm not just I'm just not a huge fan of that. It can't block for you that turn. It can't do anything uh, until later. Not really good in the later parts of the game. I'm just gonna keep them here, even after these combat tricks. So, like I said, I usually value creatures over, you know, combat tricks and instants and things like that, but I just think I'd rather have either of those than the dungeon crawler. Okay, moving on. Um, oh, you know what? Dire Wolf Prowler. I almost forgot about this card. I probably would put this higher up than where I'm putting it. I think the art on the card 
screwed me up. I do like Direwolf Prowler. Actually, maybe I'll insert Direwolf Prowler. Hmm. I would even insert it. I would put it maybe even here. Let's put it there. It's a three drop, but you can gain plus two, plus two, and haste until end of turn. So from being a two, two can turn into a four, four. I think I'm gonna put Direwolf Prowler there. I didn't recognize the card and I kept avoiding it just because of the alternate art on this one. And I'm just not used to seeing it this way. But I think Direwolf Prowler is a decent card to have in the deck and I think I think behind Inspiring Bard is where I would personally place it. So if you guys are watching this draft pack and like, hey, he's not picking Direwolf Prowler at all, uh, that's probably why. I think I'm going to go Displacer Beast next. I think Displacer Beast is pretty awesome, um, except that it's in blue, and you, would, you wouldn't pick blue very often in this particular set. So it says when Displacer Beast enters the battlefield, Venture into the dungeon. That's great. So on ETV, it enters the dungeon. You can also rep uh, return Displacer Beast to the owner's hand for three and a, a blue. Um, so it is kind of expensive to get him back there, but it's possible, especially if you're playing blue. And when you play blue, it's a little bit more about control, and you know you're not using up all your mana to do things like use Displacer Beast's ability. I think that can be good. However, like I said, blue is, I think, a bit too slow in this deck. So even a really nice card like Displacer Beast, it's a 3-2. I think it would have been better as a 2-3 just to be able to stay alive longer because there's so many 2-drops I could just trade with it. Um, especially if you tap out and you don't have enough to <clears throat> bring it back into the hand. So I, I'm not valuing it as highly even as the Dungeon Crawler in this pack. After that, I'm gonna go Boots of Speed. It only costs one with a one at attachment cost. Creature gets plus one, plus zero in haste. I don't think it's a great card, but there are some equipment decks that might be able to make a little bit of use out of this card. So I'm gonna put it there, but generally not a really card that you would value too much. Let's go with a spiked pit trap. Next, it's an artifact. Uh, cost one to put onto the board, and then five and tap it. And then basically it does five damage to a creature. And if you hit, you know, 10 through 20, you also get a treasure token. So nothing like really crazy. Um, I kind of wish it did more for 10 through 20, like um, not just get a treasure token, but like maybe deal more damage, 10 damage, something crazy, or even have like a 20, you know, where you roll a 20 and you can do like massive damage. Um, but I've seen people use it. I think if you're really struggling for removal, I think this could be good, but it does cost five. The one nice thing is it does have flash, so it can come out of nowhere. But again, it, it's you know it's a pretty high costed removal spell, but you can sort of it's almost like a foretell. But I mean, the other guy knows what it is and knows it's coming by paying the one first. Uh, this is a very similar card. Eyes of Beholder gives a creature a, a negative eleven, negative eleven till end of turn. Basically, it's a kill spell. Um, but it costs six, so four and black, black. I, I find that this is very difficult to use. You kind of spend your whole turn just removing a creature. There's a lot better and more efficient removal in, in the entire set. So I would say this is not something that you'd be looking for. I've, had, I've seen people pick it though, because black is a very popular color, and so they, they found themselves in black and everyone else has taken all the better removal, you're kind of stuck with this. So you could possibly use it, but I wouldn't be too happy if this was my removal for black. Okay, next up, I think we're gonna go with Shocking Grasp. <clears throat> this instant uh, target creature gets minus two, minus O oh, until end of turn, and then draw a card. Um, it, it just is what it is. And you know, you could maybe keep a creature alive. The nice part about it is the draw a card part, I think, where you can just get a card. Um, but like I said, it's blue, and so it just makes it so much more unlikely to use. I kind of wish Shocking Grasp did a little bit more damage, maybe like a minus three 
would be even nicer. It would make it a little bit better of a card. Otherwise, it's just eh, and I really don't see a lot of people playing this or using it, even in a blue deck. It, it wouldn't be something I feel like you'd see too often. Okay, and then hitting up the bottom slots, uh, we're gonna go with dungeon map. Dungeon map is three, and you can you can three and tap it to go into the dungeon. I've seen people use dungeon map. I I guess it's okay. Maybe it could be higher than where I'm slotting it. I just feel like I would really never ever use a dungeon map very often unless you're like in a super heavy um, dungeoning venture deck. I just um, I particularly don't go to the dungeon that often. I like going into dungeons, but I just don't see myself using the dungeon map to do it. Um, it also can add colorless mana, which I guess is okay, but um, I just don't value the dungeon map very highly, and often I see the dungeon map left over in drafts, no one's really taking it. And speaking of no one's really taking it, the leather armor as well is something that people don't take as much. Um, it gives plus zero, plus one, and has ward one, I'll take that as you will. And, but it doesn't cost anything to equip, so, I mean, I mean, you could, I just feel like this, this card doesn't make the cut. It's perfectly fine, I guess. Like, it, it can be okay, it gives ward, which is kind of nice, just ward one. It's just very mediocre, this leather armor. And I think leather armor is supposed to be kind of mediocre. I'm not a Dungeons and Dragons player, but I feel like whenever you get leather armor, you know, I play, I, I play RPGs like um, Final Fantasy and things like that. And leather armor is kind of like your first armor that you kind of get. And it helps you in the very early stages of the game. But it's just not something you ever really keep long term. And then that's kind of like what this is. It's just whatever. It's, it's You can just really leave it and not have it. So um, it's a card you'd really never use. You take it because it's the last card in the deck that uh, the pack that was passed over to you. So in this particular selection, I have um, two rows, the top row being the best row, with the Inferno of the Star Mouse just absolutely being the card you have to take in this pack. I think there are some, there's definitely wiggle room to put things in different places. Let me know if you put cards in different places. I'm, I'm pretty sure you would put something in a different place than I did. This is just how I would look at it if I had gotten this pack. So thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed going through this pack with me. Uh, we're talking about it in terms of playing a booster draft, magic limited format. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you disagree, great. If you agree, let me know. Thanks, and uh, I'll see you for the next one.